welcome to Married to Movies. Industry insiders John Russell and Tracy Kring live and work happily in cinema matrimony. They're sharing behind the scenes adventures of writing, producing, and appreciating films. Okay, so hello, my name is John Russell Kring, and this is a test version of the podcast Married to the Movies. No. What do you mean, no? Not married to the movies. Married to movies. Okay. So, what were those two things so d- different from each yeah, other? It's, a, it's that, a name. I understand its name, but the at me adding the the, you act like it was like so untoward. Like I just shit in your mouth. Married to the movies. <laughs> okay. But the name of the damn show is Married to Movies. Married to Movies. All right. Fair enough. Ah, because it's the number two. No. It's not the number two. Okay. It was going to be the number two. And, and the or... or now i got to talk with my mouth. Now though. it's going to be two, T double O. Eating and doing this is too hard. No, it's not. No. I'm going to end up with food in my mouth all the time. What difference does that make? People can't even tell. Mm-hmm. You're going to tell. <laughs> what would you like this? When you do it like that, they can tell. Podcasts are all about like being quality and sounding like NPR. Um, this is just not going to work. Okay. It's, so, it doesn't matter. I was going to use the number two in the logo. Right. When that was my idea. I looked at... <clears throat> it was so can, we acknowledge, can we acknowledge who, that that who, was my who idea? Whoever considered that you could use the word... Two and and t- the number two interchangeably. Whoever considered that? I, I just want to point out that that was my idea. There was already a blog named Married to Movies. Okay, right. But I looked them up and they had 40 episodes and they went defunct in 2011. Really? Yeah. So I thought, fuck you guys. They went defunct. Does that mean that they? Well, were, you know, somehow they were George Clinton's. Blog? Look, somehow they still had really good SEO and they came up like first. Defunct. The lineup. Let's talk about Nightcrawler. Right. <clears throat> Nightcrawler. The yeah. call we just had. Okay. And then um, Killer, whatever that was. you Killers came in of the here. Flower Moon. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, Nightcrawler. So. Well, first of all, I woke up at 530 in the morning. Okay. Well, I just want to say my friend called me at six in the morning. I know. I was already awake. I know. I looked over and you're over there flipping with your fingers. Yes. You got all knows what. It wasn't porn. My friend was having like bowel distress. Let's call it bowel distress. <laughs> Shitting herself. She ate too much sour cream. She had the shit. Doritos. She had Taco Bell. She was full. She was full okay, of shit. Look, I just want to say, if you have Taco Bell any time of the day. <laughs> yes. You got to be careful with that tummy. Okay. You got to be careful. It can be. You put it yeah. In. Yeah. It can be. And then she, for dinner, she just ate Doritos and. She said sour cream, and then she said a lot of sour cream. I'm like, you know, dairy like that. So she had Taco Bell for lunch and Doritos for dinner? Yeah. I mean, she's 10. Apparently. Ah! Apparently. A balanced diet is not something that's important uh, to pursue right now for her life. Apparently not. But I'm just saying, so she woke me up telling me that I needed to come take care of her. (laughs) Okay. Too much Doritos and yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. That's 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 only about. But you why know, were you awake? You just randomly woke up. Well, I've been having the tingles, and um, I don't, you know, I don't know why. You've been having like this numb sensation. Yeah, numb and tingling and cold in my extremities. I just randomly woke up. I also, I, I, I took my CPAP off last night for some God. reason. Can we not talk about our health issues? Oh, we have to. That's going to be part of it. That's part of it. We're every old. Morning, We're every old. Morning, just, just for the listeners out there, I just want to let you know, just imagine this guy, and he's got like the indentations of his CPAP mask on his face still. I like to think of it as it's how people should have been able to tell that Zorro was Zorro or that the Lone Ranger was the Lone Ranger. And imagine Batman. Batman's got to have a big crease right across his nose all the time. You, you are on to something. <laughs> really? Really, you are. Just think about it, okay? And doesn't Superman basically have the same hairdo as Clark Kent? Yeah, he does. That all started last night before we because went to I bed. I also have a CPAP. Because you have a CPAP and you're just like. 
the fire rises. <laughs> no, I think it was um. Nobody ever knew me before I had the mask. <laughs> yes, exactly. See, so now that you have the mask, then you can do Bane dialogue, and I and I wanted some Bane dialogue, and you didn't remember any of it. Well, I definitely think. But how about that opening to that Batman? Like, with the plane and all that. I think I was asleep. Already? (laughs) Oh, my God. We're going to have to watch that. So, we wake up this morning. Mm -hmm. Batman had been on. Right. I just, like, thumbed through the other suggested movies. And there were, like, a million Batman movies there. And then there was Nightcrawler. Right. Which I'm like, I don't really understand that lineup. But fine. It works. Dark Nightcrawler. So, I put Nightcrawler on. Which is, you know, kind of a mistake because Nightcrawler we is love it. just We're not gonna one go back just of the best movies of probably, I mean, what is it like? It was tw- 2014. 2014. Okay. <clears throat> I think that's what the description okay. said okay. before so, I fell asleep. Okay, so it's like uh, eight years, like eight or nine years ago. It doesn't uh, feel that way. It is such a brilliant film. Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, everything. It It's a tour de force. All of the other acting in it, it is such an original story. It's basically, the movie to me, it plays like a superhero movie. Mm-hmm. But the superhero is evil to his core. Is he <laughs> evil? He's an evil man. All he cares about, all he cares about is himself. And it, it and other people's feel. He, he's a sociopath. He is definitely sociopathic. So it so really it the whole movie kind of kind of plays that there's like a there's well, like I, an origin story but, there's him developing his powers there's yeah. you know there's there's the big like you know reveal of him as being amazing but then he <laughs> uses all of these abilities to manipulate um uh, Rene Russo. Rene Russo to have sex with him and do something in their apartment that she, doesn't, that she does not want to do. She complains about it, like, <laughs> which I always, my mind always admits shit like, there. Like, what in God's name does he want her to do? <laughs> like, bark like a dog. Oh, no, no. It's much worse than that. No, it, no, they're, they're, it's something really perverted. It's like, you know. Like what? I, I don't, uh, uh, peg him with his own fern. You know, possibly, yeah, with the fern that he's like always watering. I don't know. It's a possibility. I don't know. I I feel like maybe he wants stomped or something. Oh, something, something really bad. Yeah, something that humiliating. Yeah, I'm just like, what would he want that she wouldn't do? Right. Very little. She's she doesn't like him. Though at the at the very 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 end, when he basically she does act murders people. Yeah. you know when he gets people murdered. Yeah, he uh, does. Uh, and he walks in with the footage, and she is like starstruck. She is she like is. absolutely just wet over herself. Oh. Uh, I think that's the footage, too. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. But, I mean, it's just, like, what he is able to bring, mm-hmm. which basically is saving her career. Is It's Pullman, right? Mm-mm. No, it's not. Shit. What is his name? Paxton. Paxton! Paxton is so great in it. The late, great Bill The Paxton. late, great. Yes. Well, you were trying to find Twister. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, because you were upset about my tingly hands and tingly feet. Yeah, and, and was, you scaring me, making you, me think you had a heart attack. Right, exactly, because I wasn't sure. So um, the only thing that would make you feel better was Twister, and we couldn't we couldn't do it. Well, it's on DVD. Why didn't we just pull out the DVD? Because I don't know. It feels like I shouldn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to buy it on Amazon, and then I'll always have it. I'm anyway, going to have some more Pico de Gallo. Uh, please do. So and I'm the only one eating here, which is very frustrating because you eat so fast. Well, okay. I I promise uh, when we do this that I will eat uh, with you so that we'll have equal sounds where people are like, ooh, is that him slurping or her slurping? Uh, it's just all me. Maybe now. our fans will be known as slurpers. Well, I think we should all have breakfast together. <laughs> yes. 
You have breakfast with us, married to the movies. No, married <laughs> to movies. Oh, God. See, now it's going to become a thing where no, I not. purposely no, it's not. No, it's not. say it wrong. No, it's not. It's going to be like you Okay, so Nightcrawler, amazing, amazing film. I don't know. Nobody ever really talks about it. It's got such a great tone. The color of it's so beautiful. I, I don't remember the uh, the director, but um, I, he also Hold wrote on. it. Alexa, who directed the movie Nightcrawler? Nightcrawler was directed by Dan Gilroy. Dan Gilroy. Shout out. Alexa, what are some other movies directed by Dan Gilroy? I know about five movies which are directed by Dan Gilroy mm. and they are Nightcrawler, Velvet Buzzsaw, Roman J. Israel, Esquire, and Faster, Cheaper, Better. Faster, Cheaper, Better, Velvet Buzzsaw, which was also the Jake Gyllenhaal movie. Hmm. That was the one. That was the one. It was on um, Netflix, and basically, it was about the painting that made you. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That was like you know that killed you or made you kill or made you kill yourself. I forget what it was. It was not a movie that really took off. Okay, so let, let's just say this. Nightcrawler is Dan Gilroy's masterpiece. Also, we saw that other Jake Gyllenhaal movie, The Covenant, and that was really good, too. He's a, he is a an actor that you can almost always bank on. Even in oh. terrible movies like Ambulance, he's really fun in it. Yeah. <laughs> Ambulance is terrible. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. All that controversy that came up with him and Taylor Swift. Oh, my God. Nobody, you know, no slurper who is listening to our podcast. No, that's not what they're called. (laughs) That's not what they're called? Our podcast fans are not also known as slurpers. No, I don't think so. So, the next thing that happened. We have found a new way of making omelets, which is It's the best. Well, I I don't see. No, it's the best. We say we found the new way, but we didn't find the way. Okay. Was it a TikTok thing? I saw it on TikTok because all these people had these tiny little waffle makers. Okay. The tiny ones. And they're putting cheese in there, and then they're putting egg in there, and then they're putting the lid on What are tiny waffle makers? They're literally like the size of your hand, like the palm of your hand. Oh. So are they like tortilla makers? They're fucking waffles. I can't go <laughs> They're fucking waffles. <laughs> I thought, wow, if you if you made an omelet like that, it'd be amazing. I can't find a can opener. And we have a really big skillet because we're going to split the omelet. So put the butter in there and then do like a thin layer of shredded cheese. And the temperature is very key. You want to keep it kind of medium to low. We'll we'll start at uh, three. Uh, Let it melt for a second. Pour the cracked eggs over. What what kind of recipe is that? Let it melt for a second? Then you put your like cracked eggs, you know, stirred up in there. Give it a little salt. We're really into Tony Chechery's Creole seasoning for eggs. And then you can put in whatever filling you want. No, no, no. Don't put the filling in yet. Oh, let the egg harden up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to turn up the eggs a little bit. Oh, Lord. You do. We put a lid on it. But, and spinach. Do the flip to the side thing. Mm-hmm. And it is beautiful. It's like a sunrise. And it's so good. So cheesy. Tasty. It's like almost like creme brulee. Like it's the, so good. It, the cheese is like you crack it. It's like crusty. Yes. It's so good. It's so good. We have it with like sliced tomato or this morning we made pico de gallo. Okay. So we're sitting down to eat breakfast and Tavares calls. Tavares Walker. He is a director that we work with out of Atlanta. We love you, Tavares. He was just a... Uh, feeling good waking up this morning um that he had a photo shoot with the whole cast from back to the trap and had brought in the lead actress and had all the characters and all the like character team back to the trap is like a series i would call it like new jack city uh if new jack city was like more of a of a modern uh series very cool i'm dp on that uh, John is AD on that. Yes. Tavares is directing. Um, 
He's um, the writer and he's also the actor. Yeah, and he's he's the lead in it with his character Lucci Cruz. He it used to be Lucci Tom Cruise. No. Yeah, he no, he did. No, that 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 was that was the initially he was known as a Lucci Lucci Tom Cruise. And Are then you he lying changed, to me? I'm not lying to you. Are you lying? Do you want me to call him right no, now and no. prove this? Okay, I'll, I'll believe you. He calls us up. He's just feeling good. We had been talking to him about the team that he's wanting to create. He was very successful in Jacksonville, Florida. He's moved to Atlanta, Georgia now, and he wants to create a team, you know, really, really go for the production studio vibe. The conclusion that he reached this morning to me was exactly where your head always needs to be. Well, and it's one of our tenants as independent filmmakers. And sometimes you forget your own rules. You do. It's an independent film. You know, you don't always have money to throw at something. You don't always have manpower to throw at something. And when a problem arises or you're facing a challenge, the first rule is look around the room. You taught me this. Mm -hmm. This is your rule. I mean, that became the rule. Look around the room. What do you already have? What do I already have? Mm -hmm. Like, why buy a flashlight if you need a flashlight? If you already have a flashlight, you know, use the props that are in your room. Use the people that are in your room. Thanks to our sponsor, Movie Mode Merch, the graphic t-shirt store to outfit you for your next film set. Be the person wearing the t-shirt everyone asks, hey, where'd you get that shirt? Cast and crew alike love these inside jokes and filmmaking inspired designs. Check them out on Insta at Movie Mode Merch. What plays into that is uh, don't be afraid to be vulnerable and tell people that you're in need of something. The people that are in your room have given themselves over to you as tools to help you create, just like you're a tool that is being used to create your project. And if those people don't know that you need an office space or they don't know that you need a car for a scene, all of a sudden you're like going around, you're looking, you're going to strangers when you could be talking to friends. The thing that he realized was he looked around that room and, and said, holy shit, I have a team. Right. The people in this room are my team. Right. And Ooh. if I need to find something, if I need somebody to work on my social media, if I need somebody to teach me about this or that, I need to look to these people in this room. And, that, and I told him, first of all, you created that team. Right. As as a director, as a producer, you know you're not a, a general. Filmmaker. You're not a general unless you have an army. Right, you created that team, and he was like, "Oh, but it's true." <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. He did. And he did go. Oh, he, he did. did. He really did. He did unexpectedly. But, but it is true. You also are, you know, in line karmically with what independent film needs. Because you are looking in that room. I'm not sure how I feel about you using the term karmically, but okay. Is it not a word? <laughs> no, I don't necessarily, I don't believe in karma. I think karma is magical thinking, okay. but that's okay. Well, I can say <laughs> you're an idiot because karma is science, bitch. Okay, fair enough. What is karma? Karma is this idea that if you're doing, you know, uh, if you're doing bad in a to someone in a situation somewhere down the line that's going to come every, back to you in an opposite way. Every Like from some random has thing. has an equal and opposite uh, reaction. I, I understand that, but it's that does not... science. Right. Okay. That's karma. But, that, but karma is different than what, than what you plant, you, you reap. That is, that's a very different concept. Because no, what that's you, what you're attaching to it because you think karma is is what you deserve. Karma is not making a a judgment on you. What karma to me is, is this idea that by putting out something negative into the universe, something negative is coming back at you, not directly from that negativity, but from some other place to pay off the negativity that you uh, put out in the universe. See, that, and that, to me, is the problem with karma. What you're saying are two, to me, different they're things. They're all the same to me. Okay, fair it's enough. It's just different ways of saying it and different uh, ways of thinking Well, we're, about we're it. at the end of our podcast. Well, we haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> we're at the end. <laughs> <laughs> when P 
people think that couples need to agree on like certain huge topics. It's wrong. Is that it's really wrong. a huge topic? Whether religion? or not I believe in karma religion. or not. That's basically religion. It's not religion. It's not religion. It is. Oh, it is God. religious thinking. I, no, magical thinking is not religion. That's it the is. problem. It is, though. Okay. Because because anything could become a religion. I think that film is a religion to us. Speaking of religion to us, our last thing we were going to talk about. Oh, yeah. What was that? Martin Scorsese? Martin Scorsese's. I saw the trailer, uh, which you didn't even see, uh, for The Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, and I was going to uh, talk to Tracy about it because I didn't know if she knew the story the Killers of the Flower Moon is about. Is it about true crime? Yes. I'm in. Okay. It is about a true crime. This really isn't even a spoiler alert because this is, you know, pretty pretty basic. This was a very, very big book. But uh, there were these, uh, I believe it was in Oklahoma, and the Osage Indians mm -hmm. who had a uh, reservation uh, struck oil. Oh, shit. Okay, so you already know there's a problem. Ain't no white man going to like that. <laughs> oh, no. Right. But, They're going to figure out, oh, this land is really ours. Well, well, what, well, what happened, what happened uh, apparently over the course of like 15 or 20 years or something like that is that... I mean, there's wars created over this. Right, well, right. Is that um, if, the, if the bloodline of a family was uh -huh. severed... Uh huh. Blood then, quantum's right. Then, then that oil would go. Would, would that land or something would, would be like, return uh, would to be the government? Would be returned back to the government or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I think literally over the course of like twenty five or thirty years or something mm -hmm. like that, like hundreds of murders and unexplained deaths. And yeah, because they fucking killed him. And then you always tell me, oh, the government doesn't do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if it was the government or just businessmen. I think it's Robert De Niro in this particular movie. It looks like basically in, in, they're in trying general, to. It, indigenous it, it, just not murders are not. They're not news. just going in like Custer style and just wiping them out. You know, they're trying to get away with murder. You know, right. so they're like they're like you know pushing people off of you know cliffs and poisoning them and you know all this. It mm -hmm. it's just like you know DiCaprio is almost like I can't tell what he is. He's like a soldier, but I think he's also investigating, and I think he's in a relationship with one of the uh, Indian women or something like that. Of course, that. DiCaprio's right. in it. Of course, I I don't even know why I'm talking about this because I've not seen Flower Killers of the Flower Moon. But I just, th it, it's that Schindler's List thing, you know, it's that thing where it's kind of like these people are just like, oh, help us, you know, and then, um, ah. I don't know if you should make that comparison. I, no, I'm just, I, I'm saying, look, there's a lot of ways to tell a story. Okay, and stories can be told in an empowering way. Empowering. Empowering way. I'm, I'm afraid that that is going to be the vibe of uh, this particular movie. Hmm. That that's my fear. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a valid fear. That yes. is a valid fear. And Powell Wing. The people who actually live there on the reservation, how is their story going to unfold? Right. Is it going to just focus on a, bu a bunch of white men? You know what I think? Which is what it sounds like it's going to do. Because one, Martin Scorsese is making it. Yes. Okay. Uh, hey, when has he ever told a female about story? Women? What about women? When has he ever told a female story? Well... Uh, ever. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me think. If Has there's... a woman ever been the lead of his story? Ever. In a Martin Scorsese film. Yes, where bitch. The, <laughs> where a woman is the main lead in the film. Yes. He's never. Alice had... doesn't live here anymore. Huh? Alice doesn't live here anymore. Really? Yes. That was the uh, that was the one that the uh, the show Alice uh, the sitcom uh, was based on. And I does she die in the end? I don't remember if she dies in the end. Chris Christopherson yeah, was know. the yeah. I mean, so Mel's Alice Diner. doesn't live here. Mel's Diner. Mel's Diner. Yeah, came from no, no, no. It's not Mel's Diner. Alice was there a show Alice? Uh, yes, there was a show called Alice. Mel's Diner was from Happy Days. 
Oh, that's a whole other thing we can do is all these spinoffs. <laughs> all, the, all the diners. No, but no, I, spinoffs. But I absolutely nailed it. Alice doesn't live here anymore. But once again, same thing with Steven Spielberg. Male so cent- one movie. Male centric stories. One movie. With, with Spielberg, he had the uh, color purple. I mean, that's a great movie. It is. And it's got a lot of great female characters. In right, it. right. Um, but it was also based off of a book. And you could also say West. Well, yeah, I understand that. But most of these guys, both of those guys, mostly make their films based off books. These are directors, you know, these are not writer directors well, for I guess the most the part. Even be, though even though he did write Fablemans and Spielberg that's does a good move. Well, you know, Spielberg does Well, you kinda have, have to write the Fablemans well, if it's about your life. That's true. It's like a freaking diary where you're the hero. Yes, that, yeah, exactly. It, it, it was not that great a movie. I mean, I would say there are twenty other Steven Spielberg movies that are better than the Fablemans. Well, I would say <laughs> if I'm writing my own story, I would have made it way more cool. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Maybe he's just a mediocre writer. Yeah. Um, you know, so. a better version of the Fablemans is the um, uh, eight millimeter. Eight oh, millimeter is yeah, the yeah. B- but was that yeah? But was that Steven Spielberg who did eight millimeter? I thought that was more like a J.J. Abrams type. It might have been. Alexa, mi- who made the movie Eight Millimeter? From CartoonResearch.com, Eastman Kodak produced eight millimeters beginning. Oh, Jesus no, uh, I, I don't Alexa, know about no, Eastman Kodak. no. I that, said the movie. Okay, Alexa, who directed the movie Eight Millimeter? Aiden was directed by Joel Schumacher. What? What did, what did she say? She said, Adam? 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 <laughs> Does that mean, um, yeah, she said Adam. Okay. Does that mean Joel Schumacher did it? Because no. that makes more sense. Yeah, maybe. Um, oh, God. Wait, are we talking about the right, oh, wait, are we saying the right movie? Is, Uh-oh. Because is 8 mil? no, that's the Nicolas Cage movie, is 8 millimeter. Oh, no, wait, no, Super 8. Super 8. No, 8 millimeter is that super Fucked up I Nicolas thought, Cage yeah, movie. Like, a, 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 like, <laughs> like, like they're, they're, um, what do you call it when there's snuff films? Snuff films. Snuff films. It's a snuff film. They're oh my god. People on dirty mattresses. Yes, on the dirtiest of mattresses and, and like stabbing that girl to death. And, uh, the guy, the guy that ended up being the killer in it, you know, Machine is what, see, I can't believe that that stuck with me, that his porn name was Machine. Ew. I mean, I just think that's that makes me scared. My vagina goes, Oh! See, nobody wants to hear about what your vagina is doing this early in the morning, babe. That's probably true. Okay, wait. Okay. Super So eight. James Gandolfini was in that. Joaquin Phoenix. Wait, hold on. But who Peter did... Stormware playing the creepiest guy. He was oh, like, he's he great. was the guy that okay, directed the snuff it, film. It was Super 8. Catherine Keener. Alexa, who okay. directed the movie Super 8? Norman Reedus was in it. Super 8 was directed by J.J. Abrams. Bitch! Okay, I didn't eat say... Eat this dick! What? Did you just tell me to eat eat this dick? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got it right. Okay, fine. I said it felt like J.J. Abrams. I, I guess so. Okay, I'm looking... Uh, is Alexa going to be a character in our podcast? I think Alexa I think should be a character. I think well, that's a, an that's issue a good with idea. That, I, the, the only issue I have with that is like I think we need to be able to hook her up better to sound. <laughs> Alexa's going to have her own. She's probably listening right now. Oh, this guy. He was machine. He, the well, guy from it flipped. No, no, the guy the picture from, flipped. The guy from True Blood. Oh, the 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 yeah. The um, kind of bald guy. Andy. Andy. Andy from True Andy Blood. Andy from True Blood. Yes. Oh, look at the little bird right there. It's so cute. That's adorable. Okay, so what have we learned? Well, because it's trial run, I I wanted to see what the sound sounded like. We were like. going to see. We were going to possibly buy another extra microphone. Yeah. But now we're not. Well, why thing, should we spend money? Well, true. <laughs> why should we spend money on these assholes? We don't even know if they're listening. Slurpers. Um, but <laughs> this is a blue Yeti that we're recording on right now, not the Yeti X, it's just the blue Yeti, but yes. it has the setting to record two people talking across from each other. Thank you, Blue Yeti. Please sponsor our podcast. Right. But right now our podcast is sponsored by Movie Mode T shirts. 
That's not the name of it. Oh, shit. Okay. Why, why do you have... You know, you're the guy who would never get hired to, like, name shit. Like, you would not be Adam. Like, God would, not, God would like, make a thing. And he would be like, oh, Adam, go name all the beasts of the field. And you'd be like, eh. And you would name them all crazy fucking names. We'd be calling You mean, like, like Aardvark? Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> you are Adam. Duckbilled platypus? No. What this, what this proves is... No, you said I wasn't the Adam. Beginning you time. said I wasn't no, Adam, I and then you said I. Could, now no. you're saying I am Adam. You said I think your concept is <laughs> seriously flawed. You said hard bark, which makes me think all men are this way. Then what? from the beginning of freaking time, okay, you've all been idiots. Okay, I'm sure. Okay, I accept that. Alexa, make a fart sound. <laughs> That was a lovely one. But see, I don't think you can hear her very well. Alexa, turn up to 10. <laughs> Tracy, you just made a fart sound. Would you like to hear another fart? Yes. That was a gassy one. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like a child when it comes to fart sounds. They're always funny to me. All right. Okay. I think this was a great first podcast. Okay. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop farting. Alexa. Alexa, stop farting. Okay. What is that? Alexa, stop! <laughs> what is I don't know. What well, she went into like? I don't know where it was like. <laughs> I don't know. It's like some anime opening. I don't know what was going on there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <coughs> uh, Tracy, you're losing your shit. Uh, okay. Thank you for being part of um, our trial run to movies to marry. What? Uh, <laughs> Mary two movies. <laughs> Mary two movies, and we are sponsored we are. by Movie Mode Merch. Movie Mode Merch. If Check you need merch for your movie mode, Movie Mode. No, there's some really great t-shirts. <laughs> there's some really great t-shirts to wear, and I think for the most part they only come in black and blue, right? Because they are for you to wear on set. They are the most interesting and original and inside baseball movie t-shirts. Like yeah. t-shirts for grips, t-shirts for sound, t-shirts for uh, background actors, teachers for directors. I mean, these are really inside. movie centric t-shirts yes. this isn't like you know a good fellas t-shirt what? on set you can either be the guy wearing the t-shirt everybody comes up and says holy shit where'd you get that t-shirt right or you can be the guy who comes up and says holy shit where did you get that t-shirt that's that's absolutely right and I, you want to be the guy wearing the t-shirt that's right because there's going to be some holy shit happening either way <laughs> i think that commercial needs work <laughs> <laughs> I think it's perfect. Okay. I thought it was brilliant. I did like the holy shit, where'd you get that t-shirt? Or holy shit, you know, I, I I did like that part of it. Yeah, that that was good. Movie mode merch. There you, you go. You got it right. Yes. Uh, yeah, it married to movies. And I know things. Now we are going we're done with breakfast. I've finished my coffee. We hope that you've had a great breakfast and finished your coffee and we can all get about the business of making movies. Thank you, Slurpers. We love you. It's hard not to get romantic about movies. Thanks for listening to Married to Movies. John and Tracy will meet you for breakfast tomorrow. Thanks to our sponsor, Movie Mode Merch. Comfortable graphic tees made by and for awesome filmmakers to wear on set and off. Check them out on Insta at Movie Mode Merch. <laughs> <laughs>